Hello, Louisiana Beer Reviews. We're doing a duo review following up my single review of Extra Gold Lager. Thank you, JoJo of Massachusetts, for sending this to me. Thank you, JoJo. Uh, we used to get this all the time, and I thought it was a really great beer because not only was Coors like really good, it was the big kicker, you know, it was a smoky and, and a banded beer. Uh, but yeah, everybody would sneak Coors in, and it was really good until became available here. Yeah, until they changed the laws, you know, these, you know, live in a lawyer world, got to live in a lawyer rules, or you get, you get, anyway, so, uh, moving on from that, it looks like they changed the label a little bit since the last time we They have, it. I was looking at my it old bottle from 1998. Yeah, it used to say Coors, and then extra gold, and uh, this is, if I remember correctly, it had a stronger flavor, not so much a stronger alcohol content. Uh, but it was just a better, more enjoyable kind of cut. It kind of put, it's like the difference between Coors Banquet and Coors Extra Gold to Budweiser to Michelob. Yeah. So. Now this came out originally in its original format in 1985 to compete with Miller Genuine Draft, you know, Miller Highlight Genuine Draft. And um, a couple it's a of fantastic more. beer too. Which we can't get. A couple of, basically can't get. A couple of other things. It's 5% alcohol. It's 149 calories. Now, I'm going to read a little bit on here real fast. It says, brewing extra gold requires uncommon patience. You know, that's all marketing. But it says, uh, slow aging of the roasted malts. And they say they take three extra brewing steps to craft every batch. But they don't say what the steps are. <laughs> so, um, it is certified kosher. And it is from Golden, Colorado. They don't make it anywhere else but Golden Colorado's Brewery, and it says they take no shortcuts. Traditional old world re recipe. There you go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crack this open. It comes from the old traditional coarse can. I'm gonna taste this and see what it's all about. Kind of a throwback looking can. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, it's like black and gold, black stripes, gold. And of course, they were all copying that Miller Genuine Draft Black Gold with Red Highlights. Yeah. But uh, packaged draft beer never really kind of didn't really catch on. Most people apparently didn't care about getting non-pasteurized. And this is pasteurized now. It's not... Swish and pour. Oh, there's nothing to swish. <laughs> no, it's not a... Uh, <laughs> it's filtered. Oh. It's, yeah, it's just a filtered beer. It's made is it with... all beer supposed to be filtered? I give the ingredients water, barley malt, corn syrup, hop, extract, and yeast. There you go. Ah. So they don't use rice in this? No rice. It's very, it, look at the color. It's darker than regular cores. It is darker. But it's almost the same color as that Modelo we just did. Yeah, right. No joke. Huh. How are you doing? <sighs> All right. So let's go ahead and give this a try. It smells great. I'm smelling. What'd you expect to smell? It's just good beer. Nice mild aroma, like sweet little banana. Are you getting a Belgian salt of it? I think Coors use that Belgian style yeast, and you get that banana. Nope. Especially on the banquet. Here, I'm just getting like. Roasted malt, like you take barley malt and you roast it a little longer and you get this fuller flavor. And they're saying they yeah. age it longer. I was looking at some old commercials from the, the 90s. They said, we age Coors Extra Gold 70% longer than Budweiser, you know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they all seem to be battling the king, huh? That was then. This is now. Um... It's kind of a sweet taste, but it's not overly sweet. It's malty. There's a little hop action, but not much. Medium body and a crisp finish. I think it's really good. I, I wish everybody could get this, but I think they don't want it competing with Banquet. Because maybe too many I people. I see that because they're, they're, they seem to be having trouble in our area with, with Banquet being sold. Yeah, it's not real popular. Uh, in our area, you either you're either in the craft beer movement or you're in the the, the light beer movement. Uh, the in betweens where you got your uh, four sevens to like your five fives aren't really aren't really popular for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, if you go to any bar or restaurant in New Orleans or Baton Rouge and you say, you oh, "Give me a Coors," 
They're not going to bring you Coors. They're going to bring you Coors Light. On a funny note, I did go to the poor house a couple of weeks ago, and they have all their beers listed, and they had Coors Regular and Coors Banquet. So I asked them, I said, can I get a Coors Regular and a Coors Banquet? So they brought me out a Coors and a Long Neck and a Coors and a Stubby. And it was the same bar. It was the same beer. <laughs> and I told him, I said, well... Wait, the Long Neck wasn't Coors Light? No, it was a Coors. Oh, I didn't know they still made Long Neck Coors Banquet. Well, maybe they just sell them to bars. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> But I've been to restaurants in the last 20 years where I'll tell the waitress, give me a Coors. And she says, oh, okay. And then they bring Coors Light. Yeah. I said, well, I meant the original Coors. And they look at me like, they don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm not making fun of them because this goes back to what you're saying. People under 40 years old, probably, maybe, they don't even know there's a regular Coors banquet. And they sure yeah. don't know about this. No, no, they don't. So, so how do you think this does? How, I mean, how would you score it? Um, I guess uh, against the benchmark of, of Coors Banquet, I would say it's a little, a little better in some aspects and a little underwhelming in others. Um, it's a different flavor profile I'm getting, and um, it's it's a regular beer, of course, but to me it's it's kind of yeah, like it's kind of it's kind of missing um, a flavor note that I that I'm expecting from the banquet to be in it. And honestly, um, I've tasted some of the kegs of Coors Light that, that have come out, and they they taste like a cross between Coors Banquet and Coors Light. And I've discussed this with people that are Bud Light drinkers. I mean. Coors Light drinkers and they express the same opinion I have that it's a little higher in tasting. In draft? On well, draft. Well, well that's usually the case. Can. Yeah. How would you have... score this? I know what score I'm going to give it because I love this beer. Uh, I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a 92 because it's, it's um, like I said it, there's some aspects about it I thought we're going to carry over from the banquet that aren't there. Uh, but I'm also going to say it's a clean beer, it's refreshing, and it's really nothing wrong. Yeah, A- minus is not exactly a bad score. I'm saying 94, solid A. And uh, But anyway, it's like we're talking about nothing because we can't even get the beer. Okay, JoJo sent it to me from Massachusetts. Right. Somebody could send me beer from Taiwan. They could send me beer from uh, Egypt. But I can't regularly drink it, so it's just kind of like a theoretical thing. You know, right. So, and, and one of the selling points about cores when we were getting it is that it was delivered cold, it was stored cold. Yeah, that's all. So awesome. I don't know if that has anything to do with the quality of the beer, changing the beer. I would assume that it does. You know, as as anything that that heats up, that's meant to be cold, it would change the taste. So again, I don't know if, if in the transportation of this product, it did it get. Uh, heat it, I would have to say that maybe it did. It's winter time it's, right it's, now. It's the unknown. And so uh, I would like to taste this. Uh, On maybe. tap at Golden, Colorado, right? Yes. <laughs> and I bet it would be 100% better. Oh, yeah, but I mean, that's that's go, that goes for anything. All right, well, so laissez-le, bon temps relate. We're going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. Drink better beers.